Okay. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. Uh, my name is David Yoakum. I'm an associate here on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, uh, including emerging topics, just soil health, plant genetics, vertical farming, and aquaculture, to name a few. This month's theme is precision agriculture. And on today's call, we're joined by Jim Eddington, CEO of Arable. Arable enables farmers to digitize and optimize their decisions by providing data on how weather and other factors affect yield, quality, and harvest timing. It measures everything uh, of importance to crops, weather, soil, and even the plant itself using a set of spectral and thermal sensors that point down at the plants. Arable is the complete system that connects farm decisions, plant insights, and weather observations to outcomes. Each of you knows that companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We have invited you to this call because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Arable's market. You're potential customers for Arable's products and services. You have built a company similar to Arable's or you're a sophisticated business person or agricultural professional who understands the market and the challenges that this company may face. Now, before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. Um, and while we're doing that, um, a few process comments. Um, and Jim, if you could jump to that next slide, that'd be great. Um, we are not soliciting investment. Um, this presentation is to provide information uh, to help Arable find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. You are all on mute. You can use the chat window to ask a question at any time. This presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Jim Eddington, CEO of Arable. Jim, please feel free to take it away. David, thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me. I'm really psyched to be here today, share a little bit more about Arable, about our perspective uh, on the market, what we're hearing from our customers, uh, and hopefully uh, engage in some great uh, Q&A and discussion as, as we get to the end here. I wanted to start with what, what we've been seeing and hearing in the market. And I've, you know, I've been working at the intersection of, of agriculture and technology for the last, last 13 years. Uh, and have had the, uh, the pleasure to, to be able to talk to a lot of different participants in the market. And I, I will say, you know, over just the last two or three years, I've, I've noticed a lot changing in those conversations. Um, you know, and these changes uh, present obvious challenges or crises in, in agriculture today around the world, but also I think great opportunities. Uh, you know, one of them is a conversation I had, uh, you know, about six weeks back with one of our, our larger customers who you know, operates uh, in California, and they were just, they were saying that, you know, they used to see, you know, 10 years ago, about uh, two or three days over 100, that would be, you know, highly stressful to the crop, require different irrigation decisions, and over the last three years, that's been been 12 or 13, and it's just causing them to rethink sort of how they manage and even where they grow, um, and they're, you know, anticipating having to, to adjust uh, their practices and, and decisions based on what they consider to be sort of new, new environmental challenges with, with how the crop is experiencing you know, weather and stress. Um, constrained resources, you know, this is, is a hot topic for, for many folks that we talk with in the market. Uh, an obvious one is water uh, and, and increased uh, regulation and distribution of water, surface water, groundwater. And this is not just uh, you know, west of the Rockies, but, uh, but in other states and countries as well. Um, and is seen to be you know, only an increasing challenge uh, in years to come. But, and it's not, not just water, but also labor uh, becoming increasingly hard to access uh, economically in, in some markets. And then consumer trends. You know, I've, I've had a number of conversations where I ask, uh, I ask folks, uh, whether it's a you know, large farm or agribusiness or, or food company, so what's your largest concern right now? What is, it, what is it that's challenging you and you're thinking about in your business? And it was, it was about, Nine months ago or so, it was the first time ever when I asked that question that somebody answered sustainability. Uh, and that was the, the reason they gave was that they're starting to see it show up in the way that uh, their, their customers are, are behaving. And that it's really, you know, they see it as something that if they're not out in front of it can impact their bottom line. And so, you know, these are, uh, I think, obviously trends that folks on this, this call are, are super familiar with. Um, and the, the lens or the layer that I think uh, arable can can help add to these these changes, these shifts, and these opportunities. Is you know how can new technology be brought to bear uh, to help help uh, farmers, help uh, the industry adjust to these challenges? So 
excited to share a little bit more about what we do, uh, what we're up to, and how it might be able to be a tool in the toolbox to, um, to managing these changes. So Arable is, is a company that creates a complete crop intelligence solution. You know, we bring together in-field crop sensing uh, with unique capabilities that then connects to a powerful system of, of modeling how the environment is impacting the crop and then translate that into simple and intuitive uh, applications that, that allow growers, agronomists, researchers uh, to make more informed decisions in real time about what's happening in their field and how they can adjust to it. To dive a little bit deeper into the, the solution, you know, it starts with getting the best data from the field. And this is an experience that I've certainly had uh, you know, working, in, working at this uh, intersection of, of data and decision-making in agriculture is that you know, you're only really gonna be as, as good as, as the data that you start with. And if you don't have reliable data uh, that's trustworthy, uh, you're really, uh, I think, wasting your time. And so we, we believe heavily in, in creating that, but also creating it in a way that is simple, easy, reliable, and, and cost-effective. And that starts with uh, the device that you see here on the left, it's, we call it the Arable Mark. Just to give you an idea of sort of scale, I have one sort of here in my hand. This goes above the crop, above the crop canopy, uh, and then allows you to, to measure uh, exactly what the crop is experiencing in terms of, of rainfall, temperature, humidity, wind, solar radiation, uh, but also, as David mentioned, to get a view into how the crop is responding to that. And so uh, the sensors down below here are actually pointing at the plant and give you a read on sort of the, the growth rate, uh, whether or not that crop is sort of plateaued, when it's beginning to senesce, um, as well as the temperature of that canopy, which is a, a strong indicator of whether or not the crop is stressed due to, due to a lack of water. And so really sort of closing the loop on how that crop is performing through the season. Uh, we add to that what is happening in the soil. So being able to effectively measure moisture, temperature, and soil salinity uh, to inform decisions around field work, irrigation, fertigation, for, and uh, soil nutrients. Uh, and then what is actually flowing through an irrigation system. And this adds up to you know, insights that can, can be uh, used effectively in decision-making around water management, uh, crop protection, fertilizer, uh, and understanding what's driving yield and quality. I think some of the unique benefits of the arable system that, you know, one of the reasons that I've been so excited about what arable is doing is having installed a number of devices in farm fields and seen sort of the state of the art and the products that are being made available. You know, the, to date, they just really haven't hit the mark in terms of being really great products in terms of ease of use, simplicity, reliability, uh, you know, staying connected all the time, being able to weather the tough environment that happens on a farm. And those are things that we really pride ourselves on at Arable is something that deploys in, in a few minutes, push one button and it runs all the way through the season and delivers data that's highly accurate and easy to understand. To go in a little bit more into some of the use cases, one of the major ones that, that our customers uh, see value in and use today is around managing and understanding water. Uh, and so this is for, for irrigated growers, but also for researchers, agronomists who are trying to understand you know, the main driver of crop yield, which is uh, availability of water and patterns of rainfall through the season. And so what's unique about what Arable does in this space is really to take a, a holistic or complete view of, of how that plant is accessing and responding to available water. Uh, and so you can imagine it you know, like a, uh, like a, a car or a truck. You know, you, you want to be able to see whether or not the amount of water that came in uh, is equivalent to the amount of water that's being demanded. So comparing irrigation plus rainfall to a concept called evapotranspiration, which is sort of the demand of, of water leaving the system. Uh, and that's like your, you know, your gas tank. How much do I have, um, you know, available to, to do that? You know, being able to see not just is the amount I put in equal to the amount that's being taken out, but uh, checks of the reserve as well, you know, in, in, uh, what's in what's in the soil. So being able to tie that through easily to available soil moisture, uh, and then actually being able to, you know, watch the, the engine and see if it's overheating. Uh, and that's the ability to measure thermally whether or not the crop is stressed due to a lack of water. And that ties through to, you know, some deeper agronomic concepts that are, I think are, are quite interesting, but you know, really is, is about 
whether or not the, the small pores or holes in the, the leaf called stomata are open or closed. And when that crop is lacking water, it, it, it closes those up tighter, stops emitting as much uh, H2O. Those same stomata are what brings in uh, CO2. And between CO2, uh, H2O, and, and uh, sunlight, you have the, the engine of photosynthesis. And so when you when you're experiencing uh, when your crop is experiencing a lack of water, it's really shutting down those processes, and that's what's driving you know, yield loss is its inability to create sugars out of the photosynthetic process. So just a little detour into to sort of the science behind why why something like canopy temperature is able to be highly predictive of of yield and also highly valuable in making uh, irrigation decisions. Another example of, of of how this works, what you're seeing here is this is actually two nearby crops. These lines are a continuous view all the way through the season of those two crops growing uh, and with the relevant growth stage transitions as they sort of move through the season. And what you see from the arable data uh, is an early, early difference in crop vigor. So we, as we observed the crop, we saw you know, the purple line doing a, a little bit worse. It was indecipherable more or less in the, in the middle of the season, but then really, again, separated. And what, what was happening here was uh, different fertility programs. So different applied nitrogen fertilizer. And uh, this ended up being a 30% difference in yield by the end of the season. You know, this was not noticeable to the human eye. Uh, early in the season, it became uh, somewhat apparent by the time it was harvested, but being able to see earlier on that something's not going right uh, in one of these fields, and this happens to be a potato crop, uh, and then being able to, to control for that or go out and, and assess sort of what was happening, and also to know whether or not this was, you know, if I go look at sort of the, the water side of the equation, is this crop actually getting enough water? If it is, well, then this is really concerning. Uh, there must be something else going on. And I think you know, the, um, sort of the most direct example of how growers are using uh, Arable's products today is really just around planning around the variability of the weather. Uh, we do quite a bit in Brazil and with larger uh, agribusinesses, larger vertically integrated farms. And uh, obviously, you know, you just think about it, the more, the more sprayers you have, the more complex it gets to manage around the variability of the weather. And our, both our conversations with growers in Brazil, but also the surveys we've done of the market, this is their number one pain point, their number one concern. How do I better plan around the variability of the weather? And so having real-time access to, you know, not just rainfall and temperature, but rainfall and temperature in the context of the current growth stage of the crop, when is that next growth stage coming? You know, can I get out and spray? Do I need to change the plan for my, you know, my crews as it was set up for the day? Uh, and being able to easily tie all those together and get alerts on your phone when something uh, is outside of what you were expecting. And so really just you know, having really easy access and an intuitive way to get all the things that matter uh, around field logistics, um, not just spraying, but also management of uh, frost, um, you know, being able to ensure that crews are out in the field at the right time in terms of heat and humidity, all of these different things uh, add up to better decisions around getting the work done that's done each season. And then one more that I'll mention here is around disease management. And so because we are, are looking at you know, temperature, humidity, wind, rainfall, and hours of leaf wetness, so we can detect how long that leaf is, is staying wet through each day, those are the main drivers of disease pressure. And so we can help with, uh, and this is what some of our customers use uh, Arable's product for, is to assess, you know, how, how short do my spray intervals need to be? Uh, should I be out spraying every, every week or can I extend that to 10 days or two weeks based on the pressure I'm experiencing? In this case, it's around a, a, a risk from powdery mildew. Uh, but not only that, sort of explaining why that is. You know, what are the core drivers of that risk? And uh, does that matter at this time of the crop's growth, which you see across the bottom? And then as I go out into the field, you know, are the wind uh, and rainfall conditions such that I'm going to be able to, to spray effectively or, or after I spray, uh, looking back and seeing were all those sprays likely effective based on the conditions. I'm just going to go through a, a little bit more on, on a, a case study uh, that we did that's it's really centered around water, but also uncovered uh, a couple of other key areas of value. Um, and so it starts with, uh, you know, with data accuracy and having a really good uh, handle on the same concept I mentioned of, of apotranspiration. So uh, the most common 
practice of, of irrigation in the US is to use ET and then to translate it to something specific to my crop and irrigate it some percentage of that evapotranspiration. And unfortunately, it's not a very easy number to get your hands on. And so by being able to measure all of the factors that add up to evapotranspiration, we're able to get much more accurate uh, than using uh, a reference station from 5, 10, 15 miles away or some of the other methods that are, are common of, of sort of generalized and error prone estimations. Um, and also being more accurate about things like growth stages. And so uh, particularly for specialty crops, you know, it's uh, another quote I love from one of our, our customers, which is that you know, with irrigation, it, it really is all about timing uh, and knowing sort of when, when I need to enter different phases of either providing the crop with enough water or perhaps withholding water and creating stress. Uh, and so being able to be much more accurate uh, with when to make those transitions. And what we saw with this is a, a large tomato grower um, in California was when they were able to use Arable's combination of uh, environmental data, growth stage, evapotranspiration, crop stress, and see the amount that was irrigated every day, they could start to get a better beat on that, but also compare you know, planned to actuals and see if mistakes were being made uh, and actually improve the timing of when they sort of shifted into deficit irrigation uh, by two weeks. That resulted uh, all together in across uh, four different fields uh, between 35 and 39% reduction in water used. Uh, and they saw no, no change uh, between that and, the, and other fields in, in yield or bricks, uh, but did see an improvement in soluble solids, which is a big component of how they get paid at the processor. Uh, what did this add up to? at the end of the day. Uh, you know, that, and you see a quote here about just the value of having all of your data together in one system and be, not having to go to one app for your soil moisture, one app for your weather, one app for your irrigation amounts, uh, but tying that all together in an intuitive way uh, was also valuable uh, in this case. And that adds up to, to over a hundred, you know, this is on a, a tomato crop, probably grossing around $4,500 uh, an acre. And so $173, uh, profit improvement compared to the grower in that case paying about $40 an acre. And, and one question you might have here is, you know, okay, that's, that's processing tomatoes, irrigated crop. How is this used across sort of different crops and geographies? You know, when we look at our, our large corn and soybean growers in Brazil, using this primarily for field logistics and disease, and, you know, they're maybe putting one out every 500 acres or so. It really depends on sort of the configuration of fields, but one every area that they're going to be making a decision. Uh, whereas in irrigated crops, you may be putting out one device every 20 to 30 acres uh, to have a, a finer grained level of uh, detail and control and to make those decisions. And there's a, a number of other areas aside from just the water management of being, being ahead of the game on, on frost and heat, disease management, and uh, being able to consolidate from three or four systems into one and the savings that that had. Just to maybe summarize a couple of the key uh, benefits or differentiations, you know, this is agricultural technology is, is definitely uh, a crowded space. There's a number of different players, you know, what's different about arable, what's meaningful. Uh, I think the one that's, that's really important here is the first one on the left. Um, I, you know, I mentioned sort of talking to a number of larger businesses and food companies. I also have, have had the opportunity to talk to a, a number of, of farmers around the world. And I would say that the number one piece of feedback that they have for, for me and for technology companies in general is, hey, why, why can't somebody just take all these different systems that um, people are trying to get me use, put them all into one and make it intuitive? Uh, and I've, I've heard that so many times stated almost the exact same way. And you know, I, I don't know if we can say Arable uh, does that perfectly today, but we go a long way. Uh, we, can, we can collapse a number of different systems into one. And that makes it usable and useful. Uh, and if you know, none of us want to use four or five different systems in our life, if we can have it uh, much more simplified than that. Uh, accuracy, you know, some people may say, well, I'm, I think I'm doing all right, just sort of getting you know, weather from this one app or from the airport. Well, if those, if those variables are really impacting your business and your decision, accuracy matters. And uh, I think we're able to deliver not just accuracy, but, but uh, reliability. And seeing that you know, the device goes out uh, even if it's, we saw this and this happened to be in Australia, you know, it gets up to 110 degrees, a bunch of other electronic devices in their field are shutting down. We've spent a lot of time and effort making sure that this is something that's built for the farm. 
and can withstand all of the different tough conditions that happen. Uh, and then simplicity, you know, being able to get out and uh, deploy quickly. You saw, you know, saw it's, it's small, it's easy to move around, uh, it's easy to deploy. You know, we had a, a customer who deployed uh, 50 different devices in four hours uh, recently. And so much different than taking a half a day just to get something else or uh, needing a professional to come out and do some installation. And so just to, to wrap up, uh, you know, what, what would be most helpful to Arable? I know we have a uh, diverse group of, of people in, in the industry here on the call. Um, and so you know, would, love, would love your help uh, if you can provide it. Some of the things that would be most helpful to us are obviously uh, helping us to, uh, to find customers who are a good fit for what we do. These are usually uh, you know, larger farms and agribusinesses, um, agricultural input companies, developing new seeds, new crop protections, new fertilizers, uh, and food companies who usually operate either through contract or directly uh, their own farms and also have uh, a need for increased visibility in their supply chain or an increased need to be able to deliver sustainability uh, in the ways that they grow food. Uh, we're always looking to partner. You know, I have a, a really strong uh, sort of pro-collaboration mindset with Arable. We love to uh, work with other folks in the industry. I think that's what our customers want. That's what we're eager to do. Um, so other companies out there that may be complementary. And also we work a lot with, you know, the crop consultants, agronomists, uh, and other folks who are helping to bring technology or advice uh, onto farms. And of course, feedback. Uh, I, would, I would love to hear feedback, ideas you might have, uh, critiques. Uh, and if they don't come through in questions, here in this call, you feel free to reach out. Um, I'm always available. You can just ping me at jim at arable.com. We'd love to hear from you. So that's really what I wanted to, to uh, highlight today as sort of a quick run through of, of what we're up to and what we do at Arable. I uh, would love to, to hear if there's any questions from the group. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jim, uh, for a really excellent presentation. Um, that looks great. And also just great to hear the update on, um, on the Arable story. Um, for anybody in our audience who has questions, the best way to, to ask a question right now is to type it in the Q&A box as opposed to the comments section so we get them all in one uh, place that we can ask them in order that they are received. Um, we have about probably five to 10 minutes to, to answer those questions if there are any. Um, but I'll, I'll kick things off while the audience is, is sort of getting warmed up. Um, Jim, one, one thing that I think would be interesting to, to cover off on a little bit is that Arable is in this really unique position where you guys capture really unique data that enables different kinds of actionable insights at a localized level that's not possible. But a lot of these other growers and operations may be using other digital tools. So like, can you talk about like, generally speaking, like the types of scenarios that you're coming into where Arable either can be like the central platform or Arable can play into another platform, be a provider yeah. of quality data or enable others, like say them for a soil sensor to plug into what Arable has already built from an infrastructure standpoint. Yeah, great question. Um, I'll give I'll give a couple examples there. Um, you know, just to maybe do it in sort of three parts. You know, the the most common examples where people are sort of using Arable as the primary platform is, you know, is usually uh, irrigated crops or again sort of very large uh, row crops. Um, more common as you see sort of um, smaller, medium sized uh, you know row crops, grains, cereals. A uh, great example is like in in Europe. You know, we we primarily partner with uh, a product called Zarvio, which gives a, a really, I think, uh, great experience around fungicide recommendations. Obviously, huge, huge decision for crops like wheat uh, in in the EU, and we are the you know intelligence in the field that can tell you exactly what you know rainfall temperature, leaf wetness, all these different pieces were, so that their product is is that much better. Um, whereas we might have uh, less to offer just uh, straight away to a European wheat grower. Um, and you know, might be um, similar in some other markets. The, um, you know, the third one about sort of how do we work with potentially other sensors, you know, that is really what, what Airball uh, creates is a hub of connectivity in the field. I see this as a big challenge for sort of advancing uh, great products of this nature in, in agriculture is everybody has to build some of the same stuff and a few pieces of it are really hard. One of the hard thing is connecting data from farm fields all over the world. Uh, we've spent a ton of time on it. We have several folks sort of from the cellular, you know, deep veterans of the cellular industry, and we work quite hard to make sure that we can connect uh, reliably and cost-effectively and, and get that data up exactly when it needs to be up. 
So the thought that every company is going to go build that, man, it's, it's a big investment. And so we provide uh, a platform to you know, soil sensors, to irrigation sensors, to other types of sensors to go in the field so that they, we can provide them power, connectivity, and the agricultural context of well, what was the crop actually doing when that happened. And I think the effort that goes into every company trying to replicate that is, is just uh, not efficient. And so we're excited to be able to be that uh, hub of connectivity that helps other uh, unique and, and valuable products kind of get to market faster. That's a really excellent explanation. And, and one thing you kind of touched on in that answer kind of speaks to a little bit of the breadth of the types of customers that you work with. So, you know, I think of arable and I think of not just specialty, but I think of specialty across a bunch of different types of climates. Um, I think of water stress regions in California. I think of um, the Pacific Northwest, but I also think of traditional, you know, big ag seed R&D. And so one thing that's really great about products like Arable is that it's so easily, it's a great product, which I think people miss the point on that it's a great product. And so can you just talk about how those different customers might use something like Arable that has the breadth that it does for like different like use cases and, and how different customers might extract value from it in different ways? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and uh, I'll mention, you know, one in there that's maybe not, not obvious. We don't you know, think all of us think about all, all the time, but is, um, you know, is research and development. And so, you know, all of the main um, input companies are, are uh, customers of ours and, you know, why are they interested in Arable? They know that, you know, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, the advancement decisions of a breeding pipeline or a chemistry pipeline, their ability to make the best decision about what to advance and what not to advance and the speed with which they can do that uh, is a core driver of their business and their differentiation. And so, you know, better data makes better decisions and we provide the best solution to getting complete data, uh, some of which is totally unique to what Arable can do in a really uh, convenient, effective and, and simple package. And so they're putting these out on, on all their trials, using it to compare not just within a couple of trials, but all over the world. So one system that can cover a breeding network globally uh, with, uh, with crop, you know, in-field crop intelligence. And so that's really the sort of the story. And that's not just, you know, the large crop input companies, but I'm, I'm really proud of a lot of our uh, startup co customers who are, you know, they're doing six trials this year, not, you know, 500 breeding locations. And, uh, you know, they're trying to figure out how they make their new biologicals work or did they work or was it just the conditions that drove it? To be, you know, was the disease pressure actually there, or did my, you know, so did my product really work, or did it not? And we help answer that question. Um, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, irrigated customers. That's certainly one that uh, that plays to our strengths. Uh, and in that case, you know, they're looking at, hey, you know, I've got less water than I had access to last year. Uh, I have less labor to be able to manage all of these things. How do I really get uh, finer control on what the crop really needs right now? So, and the, that decision is of course, hey, I'm gonna save some water. There's dollars in that. I'm gonna save power. There's dollars in that. Uh, but you know, yield and quality, being able to make sure that you're not making mistakes that subtract from yield and quality, much bigger uh, part of the value proposition. And the other one is a lot of our customers are talking about whether or not they can even farm as many acres next year. I mean, it's a very real conversation about how much land do I have to give up given my water rights. And so, um, you know, something that we're passionate about is helping helping agriculture to manage through uh, some tough situations in terms of how water is developing you know, over the last couple of years. Um, and then, you know, I, I also really like um, so what I what I mentioned, which is sort of our, our large large farms. Um, this is a lot of it is in Ukraine and Brazil, um, but these are folks who have 350 sprayers. And if you can imagine trying to to manage uh, you know that fleet. Uh, logistics is one of their, so field logistics is one of their biggest cost centers and what they see as one of the biggest opportunities for changing their, you know, their profitability. And so making sure that those, you know, those crews have the best possible information and the managers, if the managers are able to, to sort of see everything that's going on across an entire region uh, and get it in real time and in a way that's, that's much simpler and, and lower maintenance. You know, we didn't mention one thing, but I'll I'll pull it out now just because it is, I think it's a um, interesting part, but important if you're operating in farming. The, the way our product works, there are, there are no openings and there are no moving parts. And usually people can kind of figure out how you might be doing most of the things that we're doing. The one that is uh, somewhat not obvious is rainfall. 
And so we actually do rainfall acoustically. So each raindrop that hits this dome makes a noise like rain falling on your, your roof in a, a shed. And uh, we then translate that into uh, a measurement of rain uh, amount and rain intensity that is more accurate than what you see out there with common rain gauges like tipping buckets. And that's great. You're like, hey, neat trick. Well, it matters because now you don't have to go out and clean out um, you know, spider webs, leaves, debris, dust, bugs. Uh, and to keep it accurate, you don't have to go recalibrate a little spring in an arm. I mean, it's just kind of crazy the way that that, that works today. And so um, you know, creating something that's solid state and you can just set it out. You know, some of our customers drive four hours to go install a device or you know, we have one that I, I love. It's actually in, in uh, it's a food company that operates in Vietnam and it's a six hour motorcycle ride to get to the field. And so the idea that I'm gonna go out and uh, visit that field just to maintain some equipment, it doesn't work. And so it has to be set it and forget it. Uh, and that's the, we spent a lot of time and effort making it uh, that easy. Yeah, I'm really happy you mentioned what you guys measure rainfall. It's super cool, super innovative. Um, great. Well, uh, I'm going to pause here and see if there are any lingering questions um, from the audience before we before we wrap things up here. Um, and typically at this time, I would ask Jim what your asks are, but you clearly have them asked. You clearly have them outlined here, <laughs> which is really helpful. Um, well. I guess with that, Jim, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, congrats on all the progress today and always great to hear the arable story. Um, I'd also like to thank our, our audience for your participation and attendance today. Um, for anybody who's new to these webinars, we host these every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time. You can register for Agri-Food Conversations as a webinar series by going to agrifoodconversations.com. Um, if you know anybody that would like to watch this webinar, um, please feel free to share it with them. Um, a replay of this webinar will be emailed to you the next 24 hours. Um, they can also go to agrifoodconversations.com, and I think it's going to be available on YouTube as well. Um, so you should be able to go there, depending on what your preferred platform is. Um, Jim, thanks so much for your time, and everybody have a great rest of your Thursday. David, thank you for having me. I appreciate it.